Dorothy Semo. Please appreciate our sister as she brings the message to us. Amen. Appreciate her. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Dorothy Semo is married to one man that I know called uh, Alan Semo. I don't know that he's in the congregation, but he's, he's, he's shy, I know. He's not a people person. He's not a politician like me or a pastor. <laughs> so thank you, Dorothy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Buona Sifiwe, church. Buona Sifiwe. I honor the Lord today for giving me this opportunity to share such a beautiful, wonderful, yet so powerful subject. A subject that should not be taken lightly, especially by us, those who are in the kingdom of God. I honor the pastors today for giving me this opportunity. I also don't take it lightly that you've given me the microphone and the pulpit to share a nobody like me. I honor you, the congregation, for not walking out when you heard that it was Dorothy Semo who was preaching today, wondering what will this girl tell us or what will this mama tell us. And I want to honor two very special people in my life. My husband, Alan Chukunzira Semo. That man is a blessing to me. I am who I am in the ministry because of him. He finances my ministry. He blesses my ministry in ways you would not even imagine. That man, many may not know it, but he is a man of God. Alan, just stand and wave to the crowd. That is my sweetheart. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I honor one very, very beautiful woman who carried me for nine months in her womb and gave me birth, brought me into this world, my mama Ruth Minayo Owar. Please just stand and wave to the crowd. She has surprised me today. I didn't know she was coming. Just quickly, I would like us to, those who can open quickly so that we can have enough time, just read the scriptures. Some of us may have come after the scriptures were read. So let's read Acts chapter 8, 14 to 17. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Turn with me again to John 14, 16 to 17 and 25 and 26. I'll ask Sister Tabitha just to come closer. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. 25 and 26. All these I have spoken while still with you. But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Turn once again to Acts 1.8. I'd like to add that one so that we just run quickly. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The subject of baptism of the Holy Spirit is something that has been confused by so many people and in that case it has made a lot of controversy to come into the body of Christ. Yet it is something so simple for each and every one of us who are called by God's name, everyone who is born again. This baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is for each and every one of us. God is no respecter of persons. So he doesn't take this one highly saved, this one lowly saved, or this one worthy and this one unworthy. This is one thing he gave for all of us. I would like uh, Sister Tabitha just to share her experience shortly on the same. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. Okay, my name is Tabitha Ogonda, and I'm here to talk about my baptism with the Holy Spirit experience. 
Now, during membership intake for this church, there's a form to be filled. And one of the questions in that form is, have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit? And part B of that question goes to ask that what was your experience? You're supposed to say what happened. Now, when I was filling this form, I had no idea. I had no clue how to answer part B, how to give a description of how I had been baptized by the Holy Spirit because I had not experienced it. The only baptism I knew was that of immersion in water. So I just said yes in the first uh, part A, but part B I went, I left blank. So uh, I was supposed to go for the oral interview. When I went for the oral interview, I was being interviewed by Pastor Ibrahim. Now, when you go to that question, he asked me, have you been baptized by the Holy Spirit? I said yes. Then he asked me, do you speak in tongues? Then I asked him, is it a must for somebody to speak in tongues? That is when he or she has the Holy Spirit. Then he told me, yes. And he explained to me that speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Spirit indwelling in a person. And therefore, it is very important in a believer's life. Now, from that point, I purposed in my heart that I wanted to have this evidence. I wanted to speak in tongues. Now, soon after that, I joined the New Believers class. And one of the topics being handled in that class is Holy Spirit. Now, when we got to that topic, the teacher told us at the beginning of the lesson that she was hopeful that most of us, if not all, by the end of the lesson, were going to speak in tongues. Now the teacher taught the lesson, he got to that point, she got to that point now where she was praying for her, us and laying her hands on us to receive the Holy Spirit. Now I stood there waiting for this Holy Spirit to come, but nothing was happening. The teacher prayed, she laid hands on us, but still I was waiting and nothing was happening. Then I remember she prayed for everyone and she concluded the lesson. Then she told us, that it, uh, it uh, okay, she, she concluded the lesson, but nobody spoke in tongues that day. I don't remember anybody in that class who spoke in tongues that day. But she encouraged us and told us that it is something that is there. It can come today, after two day, days, after three days, after a week, or even after a month, that we just continue to be expectant and believe. Then a few weeks after that, I had come for the choir practice, and my sister Dorothy here, came sharing how that particular day she had prayed for her young daughter. And the daughter received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. I remember we were a group of ladies and we were asking her, what did you do to her? How did it happen? She told us that there's nothing she did. She just prayed for her and the daughter received the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. She told us that all one needs to do is just to have the desire and believe in your heart and it is God who fills people. And uh, she told us that if any one of us was interested, she was ready to help us pray so that we receive the Holy Spirit. So I remember pulling my sister on the side and I asked her for an appointment. I told her, I want you to help me pray to receive this Holy Spirit. I've gone through the New Believers class. The teacher had prayed for me. She had laid hands. I had not received it, and I really want it. So I asked for an appointment. She gave me an appointment. And uh, immediately the week that followed, I was chasing after her. I told her, I called her and asked her where she was. She told me she's still busy, she's still attending to some other people. I told her, just let me come. I'll wait on the line. When you are through with those people, I'll come in. So I went. I met her. We had a meeting and we talked. And by the end of our meeting, I spoke in tongues for hours. And I want to thank the Lord so much because my life has not been the same again. The Holy Spirit directs me. It speaks to me. I can pray for hours and it just feels like a minute. I tell you, it's a wonderful experience to be guided by the Holy Spirit. So today, my prayer to all of you today is that you'll release yourself to God. You'll have the desire in your heart and God will fill you. You have to have the desire. You have to believe, and God is going to fill you today. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha. Now let's talk about two things to help us understand, so that not just for ourselves, 
but for those out there. Because if God has given us something that we are all to have, it's not just for us in Sitam Kisumu, it is for every believer. Just the way when you get saved, you're not saved for yourself. You're there to share the gospel with other people that they may come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, there are two things that people confuse and think it is one and the same thing, salvation and baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible shows us that these are two different experiences, but of the same spirit. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. But there is something else that happens after, that if you believe, if you desire, the Bible puts it in three words, either baptism, receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit, so let's look at it through the word of God. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, I will quote, I'll not read, I'll just quote, that we become a new creature, as the Bible says it. When we get born again, the spirit of God testifies with our spirit that we are called the sons of, of God. But that is salvation. Now, the scripture we read before that says the world cannot accept or receive him because it does not know him, neither does it see him. When we look at the description of the world according to the word of God, there's a scripture that says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The world refers to those who are not born again, those who have not accepted Jesus into their lives. So we put that context here and it says the world cannot accept or receive him. But you and me who are born again, who are saved, who have declared and confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can receive him because he lives with us and will dwell in us as the scripture we have all read together has said. Are we together? So the world that is not born again cannot receive the Holy Spirit. But us who are born again, we know this Holy Spirit because he lives in us. So when you are born again, yes, when people say, oh, I received the Holy Spirit when I was born again, they are not wrong. They have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives with them and dwells in them. But there is something else the Bible talks about, the Holy Spirit being poured on us for us to receive what? power. That is the word of God that is saying this. So there are two different experiences. And in Acts 1, 5, those who can open quickly, open quickly. Acts 1, 5 and 8. The Bible says, Acts 1, 5 says, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The baptism of John is the baptism of salvation. 8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea, Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. Jesus was speaking to the disciples. Were the disciples born again? Hadn't they declared Jesus as Lord? So here we see Jesus is explaining that the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes after salvation. This is a gift he has reserved for those who are called the children of God. I gave an example in the first service that a sister here shared and it is so powerful. When a child walks into your house, your child, and goes straight into the fridge and picks up the water and pours a glass and drinks, will you shout at your child? Because that is your child. But when a strange child comes from nowhere, you've never seen this child before, and he walks into your house, goes to your fridge, pours water and drinks, won't you jump up in alarm and say, who is this? What do you want? Where do you come from? So the same way, when we walk up to the front to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit, God has already poured it for us to receive. It is ours. That fridge is mine as much as it is Christian's, my son. So for him to go into the fridge and pick that water, it is his. For you to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit as a child of God, it is yours. This baptism is yours. You have a right to it as long as you are called a child of God, meaning you have repented and given your life to Christ, asked Jesus into your heart, confessed him as Lord and Savior. 
It is not for some. Some people look at those who are speaking in tongues and say this one must be very, very saved. It is not like that. God is no respecter of persons. All of us who are called by his name, this gift he has given to us for us to enjoy, for us to speak in tongues, speak, get gifts of the Holy Spirit through that because the door to the gifts of the Holy Spirit begins after baptism of the Holy Spirit. Show me a man of God saved who is preaching and thousands are getting saved and he doesn't have baptism of the Holy Spirit. I will show you the same man when he receives baptism of the Holy Spirit will preach and millions will get saved because the power of God would have come upon him. Hallelujah. I hope we are together. So we, here we have seen that Jesus is referring to two different experiences. And I quoted Romans 8. I didn't tell you where, but Romans 8, 16 says, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children when we are born again. So there is something that comes after. When you read the book of Acts, continue in the word of God. Read the book of Acts. When these people were prayed for for baptism of the Holy Spirit, at what point of their spiritual lives was this? It was at the point where they had received Christ or rather confessed Christ as their Lord and Savior. When we read ahead, the scripture we just read, when the disciples were sent to pray for them, they did not pray for them that they get saved or get born again. They did not preach Jesus Christ to them, but they went and prayed, laid hands on them that they may receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, what is the evidence that you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because here again, people bring some confusion. They are not too sure. But the word of God is not put there to confuse us. The word of God will set us straight. Any times we have these questions, go back to the word of God. Read everywhere that it is written about baptism of the Holy Spirit and find out what happens when somebody receives baptism of the Holy Spirit. We go to Acts 2, 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Say all. Say all. Because I want you to get this into your spirit. God did not fill some. It did not say some were filled. It did not say the 12 were filled and the rest were not. It says all who were in that room were filled in the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They spoke in tongues. That is the word of God. Acts 19.6 says, When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So according to the word of God, what happens when you receive baptism of the Holy Spirit? You speak in tongues. Hallelujah. This is for all of us. It's something supernatural. Some of us wish to have an, a supernatural experience in our lives where we don't say, oh, I was injected and I was healed. You want to say, oh, I was divinely healed. Now God is here giving you something that is supernatural and you're feeling, no, oh yeah, it's not for me. I've only been saved one month or I've not set my life straight in this way or that way. Some people have been locked out of this 15, 20 years because they've not fully understood that God has this for even them. It, you don't have to be a minister of the gospel. You don't have to be a worshiper. You don't have to be a leader, an elder. It is there for everyone who is called by God's name. So now we've seen the evidence is speaking in tongues. Now why should every believer speak in tongues? Some people feel, I know, that is not for me. I'm too, I'm too gisty for that. I'm too classy for that. Ati, I'm opening my mouth and saying things that God knows what I'm saying. There is a reason God gave us that gift. God does not give useless gifts to his children. He gives something that is worthy. When you buy a gift for your child, when you go into the supermarket to buy a gift for their birthday, don't you want to give this child something that will mean something to them? Are you that cruel that you'd give something that is so useless to this child? You want to give something that will be worthy to this child. So in the same way, God has given us these tongues to do something in our life. Now the reasons we speak in tongues are three. Number one, I've just highlighted three. 
Number one, it is the initial evidence that you have received baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have read that in the word of God earlier. Not I say, not the pastor saying. The Bible says the initial evidence of you receiving baptism of the Holy Spirit is that you will speak in tongues. Number two, it is for spiritual ed edification or building us up or charging us. Again, I'll give an example of a fridge. I have electricity in my house. If I plug in the fridge and I never switch it on, will my fridge ever run? Will it be effective? No. So sometimes people have received baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they do not want to speak in tongues. Yes, they spoke in tongues. The initial time they were here being prayed for, they spoke in tongues, but they say that is it. Now there you lock yourself out because you're not being edified, you're not being charged, you're not being built up. You're not being built up. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. You grow. You grow in the things of God. Some things are so hard for you to stop doing. Some people are addicted to pornography. Some people are addicted to smoking. Some, Joyce Meyer gave an example where she used to leave church and go hide in her car and smoke. Yes, children who are called by God's name, people who are saved are addicted to these things. These things are also in the church. And you wonder, not that you enjoy it. For you to hide, you know it is not right. You know it is not for you. You, you. you know you belong to a holy God, but you've tried in so many ways to stop, but you cannot stop. I had a problem with drinking. I got saved and I could not stop drinking. I tried everything. I did everything to stop. I read the Bible. I prayed a lot. I could not stop drinking. Every time I passed a bar, it's like the bar is calling my name, Dorothy. Dorothy, Dorothy. Every time we would sit with our friends and family, some of them were drinking. When they opened that tasker, I see the smoke like it's rainbow. You know something beautiful, the smoke that comes, those of you who are there like me, when it just, you see like a smoke that comes. I see it like rainbow, something so beautiful. The smell, sometimes I'll just sit next to somebody who is drinking so that I get the smell. So you know what I told myself? I'll go back to scripture. And you know, if your motive is wrong, you can get scripture to support your wrong motive. So what did I do? I said, the word of God does not say, do not drink. It says, do not be drunk. And I know if I take my three exports, I'll not be drunk, I'll be tipsy. Tipsy is okay. Drunk is not. So I would still go to the club with my friends, and I would still have my three beers and I would tell God, God, even in that club, there are people there who need to know about you. So I will go and sit there and have my three exports and share. I didn't want to take spirits because spirits, you take one or two thoughts and you're finished. Now you've, you've, you've wasted, you've wasted that time. But three exports, it will take me some time to get there. So I would go and I sit and I take the first, the second, and I would feel on my knees, imefika. How, how many have been there? Don't sit and pretend you're so holy. Some of us have been there. <laughs> and you would feel in Afrika Sasa. And suddenly you just get nice and talkative. And the stories flow better. There are some stories that you are so funny and interesting when you've taken alcohol. But when you're sober, they are not funny. So I would take and the stories are so nice and everything is just nice. And suddenly, those three beers, I convinced myself I'm not high, I'm not yet. At least, I, I ate supper well. Nini, I can add one more. Shortly, one shoulder is doing like this, another one. Shortly, I'm on the dance floor dancing. I've not testified to anybody, but I've told people I'm saved. Now, do you think I was a plus or a minus to the body of Christ? In my testimony, that is. But I thank God for pastor here who said, we are at different levels. You don't get saved today and jump up and you're right there. God brings you slowly. If anybody visited me, I remember there's a lady who was here, Sister Getri Kuya, the late. She came to visit me and she was so overjoyed. Dorothy, of all the people, is saved. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Doro, let's just pray that you stop drinking alcohol. I almost chased her from my house. 
Because me, I'd supported myself. That is something I've clung to. I cannot leave. But when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, changes began to happen as I continued praying in tongues. Changes began to happen. I used to tell God, how can you bring me back? I got saved in Nairobi. How can you bring me back into Kisumu? A city that tulikuwa tumechafua kabisa. Sio na vitumbaya, just happy to happy. I remember somebody dared me once, I'll not say that person, to jump on top of a table in octopus. How many know octopus? <laughs> and I danced on top of that table. Now you're bringing me back to the same city to talk about you. But I thank God for his grace. Because here is where I was needed. Where people can see the difference that God has made in my life. So when I started, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I started praying in tongues. I didn't understand what I was saying. I didn't even understand much of this. All I know is that I've seen men and women of God in TV everywhere. Praying in tongues, praying in tongues. So I started praying in tongues. And changes began to happen in me. Where I would ve get very annoyed with my husband if he does something small, the temper started going down. Some of you in your houses, if we walked there, we would not say the Holy Spirit lives there. You can be quarreling and shouting with your husband, abusing each other. That is when Pastor Elias should come and knock. Hodi, and you, wem jinga kama mamako, wem jinga, wem nini ni. And you, oh, hi, Pastor. You see? Now, when you pray in tongues, you get edified. That tempest just goes down and down. Each day you pray in tongues, it goes down and down. The desire for alcohol came down and down until I saw there is no need for this alcohol. Now you can even pour it in front of me. All types. Because those days we used to go to Avco and shop all types. We, my, half my salary used to go to Avco to buy the, 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 the cheaper alcohol at the barracks. And I would be so happy in my house. I have Amarula. I have Export for those who want. I have Smano for those who want. I have whiskey. Now, any free alcohol, I would rush there. But now in Christ, pour all the types. I've prayed in tongues. I've been edified. Pour all those alcohol in front of me. It doesn't bother me. I have been edified. I have been charged. So the things you find impossible to stop doing, you as man... As you pray in tongues, it becomes easier. And finally, you let go. The Spirit begins to reign in you in a way you did not expect. So do not tell me you do not need this Holy Spirit in your life. Because you're not perfect. While on earth here, you're not perfect. You need the Holy Spirit. Some things that were impossible for you to do, like she talked about prayer. We would watch people praying for one hour, two hours, and we say, these people are cheating. Me and my sister, newly saved, we decided to hold our own Kesha because we didn't get permission to go for Kesha. So we held our own Kesha in the sitting room. Oh my God, wasn't it difficult to pray? We, you doze, you find you're praying for the cat. For, you know, useless, don't laugh, you've been there, even you. You've fallen asleep and you've prayed for useless things. It happens. It happens. But when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, your prayer life changes. You pray with power. You desire to pray. You're like, what time will it get for me to start praying? My time for prayer is almost. You're walking in a matatu. You're praying in tongues. The music is blaring. It's not music that glorifies God. You're praying in tongues because you just can't wait to get into a secluded place to pray. So things you could not do, you start doing. Things that you could not stop doing, you stop doing. Because the Holy Spirit is edifying you. Hallelujah. Number three, it provides a way for you to pray about things you would not think or know to pray about. Sometimes you're going through such a difficult challenge. You say, this one, because you believe pastor kiniombea, things will change. Now imagine this. This is the Holy Spirit, God himself, praying in you, for you. How much more powerful is that? That is more powerful than anything. God himself is praying for you, for the things you are going through, for the things you do not even know you are going to go through. The past, the present, the future, things that affected you in your past. As you pray in tongues, he will bring it to light. Deal with them. You don't know the challenge.
challenges you're going to face tomorrow. If God was to show me tomorrow you'll get up, you'll get an accident when you take this and this matatu, do you think I'll get out of the house? I'll stay in the house. But the Holy Spirit knows that he needs me to go and get that accident so that he heals me and shows the world his divine power. You do not know what to pray for sometimes. Sometimes we pray amiss. Sometimes your wife has hurt you so badly. The prayers you're praying for her, I'm telling you, my friend, you don't even want your children to hear those prayers. But when the Holy Spirit prays, he never prays amiss. He prays on point and through you, for you. Hallelujah. There are times he will lead you to intercede for somebody in tongues. You will just know there is a burden. There are times the Holy Spirit wakes me up, pray. I don't know what I'm praying about, but if I pray in English, haingi. So I pray in tongues and I feel, yes, something is happening. Until you feel in your spirit, it is enough. And in the spirit realm, he has done it. Hallelujah. So will you still tell me you are too good for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You're too proud for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? What do you have to show God? Everything you have has come from God. So he knows you need this. Yes, you've been saved 10, 15, 20 years. He knows you need it because he wants to push you to another level. You have done great exploits in the kingdom of God. Glory to God. But now he wants you to do even greater exploits in the kingdom of God. And he knows when my child receives this baptism, it's going to do mighty wonders in the lives of those around him. Not only your life. Bona sifiwe. God has given us this wonderful spiritual gift to bless us, to edify us, to refresh us throughout our lives on earth. Let us receive this gift from God and enjoy every benefit that comes from speaking in tongues. This is not for some, this is for all of us. Now let's see the Bible way to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because there are many ways. Jashon talked about people who are being given notes and they are saying, oh, today I've pay, prayed in tongues from page three. Tomorrow I'll try and pray from page four. A sister who came home for the same prayers was telling me she went and she went into a class and she was told to go with a pen and paper. So they are told, say ra, she writes ra. Say ka, she writes ka. Because if you don't write those notes, as you walk out the door, you will forget every word you've been told. Now, how do you know those things you're saying are of God? The tongues the Holy Spirit leads me to speak are different from the tongues the Holy Spirit will use Pastor Ruth to speak. Even if they sound the same, they may not have the same meaning. The spiritual realm is different from the earthly realm. I can say four words in tongues and it means 20 different things. Now, if you copy somebody's tongues, you could be cursing yourself without knowing. I pray that it, it means you're doing nothing, but you never know. That is not the Bible way to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's see the Bible way. Number one, know that God already gave the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. It's only the disciples of that time who were told, wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes on you. We were not told to wait. If you look at the Bible, nobody else was told to wait. Only those disciples of that time because they were the initial people to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. So know the Holy Spirit was poured out on that day. It is up to you and me to receive it. We don't need to come here and tell God, send your Holy Spirit to me. Send your Holy Spirit to me. He already did. How can you ask God to do something he has already done? It is up to you and me to receive it. I'll give an illustration. Pastor, please help me. I've bought Pastor a wonderful glass as a gift. And I say, Pastor, this is your gift. What do you say? Thank you. Hallelujah. The way you receive a gift from a friend is the same way you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now watch how most of us come for baptism of the Holy Spirit. Take your gift. I give unto you. Please 
pastor, give me this gift. I need this glass. I don't have glasses in my house. I need this glass. Please give it to me. Will it come to me? I've not received it, but I'm pleading with him to give it to me. Please, please, Lord, you have done it for so and so. We lift up our hands. He cannot pass you by. He's poured out his spirit on all flesh. If you want him, receive him. Receive him. As simple as that. We complicate issues too much. Number two, anyone who is saved, born again, sorry. Anyone who is saved, born again, is ready to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Acts chapter 2, quickly. 38. We want to discredit the devil today that has kept his people from receiving power from on high. There are gifts of the Holy Spirit sitting here, and the door is to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. There are people with gifts of healing, gifts of prophecy, gifts of knowledge, name it, supernatural gifts. But the devil is causing us to have doubt and fear, misunderstanding. Yet you and me have all this in stock. God is no respect of persons. If he did it for them, he has already done it for us. So let's read 238. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. Acts 2.38, it says, repent, be baptized, that is salvation. And what will happen? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children. Did it say the promise is for watumishi peke? Did it say the promise is for worshipers peke ake? The promise is for all of us, for you and your children. Why do you lock yourself out? You're serving God in such a mighty way, but you feel this is a gift that is not for me. God has given me my portion to serve him. You do not know that with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will do greater things in Christ than what you are doing now. We have agreed. Look at Acts 19.1. We do not need to wait. You don't need to clean up your life. You don't need to sort out yourself. Girls say, oh, I think this boyfriend I have, maybe I should leave him first. Then I can come. Oh, this relationship is not right. Oh, I need to sort out my marriage first. I've not solemnized my relationship my, with, my, with my husband. So let me do that first. You're putting blocks and hindrances. The Holy Spirit is there to help you sort out those things. Not you to sort out yourself. Not you to clean up your own life. You would not need the blood of Jesus if you could clean up your own life yourself. Would you need God? No. If you could clean up your life your own self, you would not need the blood of Jesus. And yet we know we are blood washed. We are blood bought. So Acts 19.1 says, did you receive, he was asking them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, eh? We haven't even heard if there's a Holy Spirit. You who is in this church, we are Pentecostals, we have heard there is a Holy Spirit. Imagine these ones had never even heard there was a Holy Spirit. But when they were shared with the word of God, they believed, they lay hands on them, they received. And that was their first time to hear about the Holy Spirit. So how much more you and me who have known he exists and know he comes from God? You do not need to wait. You did not need to beg. Begging is unbelief. Unbelief begs. Faith receives. We've shared the word and we believe the word of God is true, right? So if God says you just need to receive, why do you need to come and beg him? Come in confidence knowing that it is what God has prepared for you. I'll give another illustration of two men. They called an altar call for those who wanted to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. And these two men came forward. 
And four brethren came to pray with them. Four brethren came to pray with them. And the first brethren is on his right shouting, Hold on, brother. Hold on for the Holy Spirit. Hold on. And the one on the left is shouting, Turn loose, brother. Turn loose. Release yourself to the Holy Spirit. And the one in the, the back is thumping his back very hard and shout, shout louder, brother. Shout for God to hear you. Shout loud. You see how we confuse each other? And the one at the front is even spitting on him as he prays for him. He's spitting on him and said, Give it up, brother. Give it up, brother. Give it up, brother. So everyone is giving different instructions. You don't know whether to hold on, to let loose, to release yourself. And meanwhile, you're begging God. So after 45 minutes of prayer, this man went, the four men got tired and said, Hawa, pengine siyo wakupata. An elder was making me laugh today. And he said his sister, Ligongwa Kichwa Ngoto. Like she was wasting time there. Enda nyumbani. People get confused. So this Kenneth Hagin called them and said, do you want to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit? And they looked at him like he was mad. Because what have we been doing here for 45 minutes? We've been begging God for baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he shared with them what we have shared today in a shorter time than what we have shared with you. God has given us much time we have shared. And he prayed for them. They received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are begging and pleading and waiting for God to give you something that God is waiting for you to receive. You're pleading with him to give you something that he's waiting for you to receive. He is already here. Those who want, those who desire, come and receive. Number three, it is scriptural to, to expect to receive the Holy Spirit when hands are laid on you. In Acts chapter 19... Verse 6, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So as you come here to be prayed for, know that it is scriptural for you when hands are laid on you to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some people, they may not even get to you. Already you'll receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You, they didn't need to beg or, or cry or do what or do gymnastics. Wengine adjacionally tuambia waliambiwa endeni huko inje mulie kwanza. Number four, expect the Holy Spirit to move on your vocal cords and put supernatural words on your lips. We are talking about the Bible way to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you utterance, but you, the man or the woman, has to speak. That's Acts 2.4. Some people, when they are going to be prayed for, for baptism of the Holy Spirit, they lift up their hands and their mouths are open. They are waiting for a voice to come from heaven and enter their mouth and speak through their mouth. If you read that scripture, they spoke in tongues. It's not written, the Holy Spirit spoke in tongues. They spoke in tongues. The Holy Spirit came on them. They spoke in tongues. Other people come and you're looking, you're waiting, like me, I was one of them. Where will this Holy Spirit come from? Yani, uko too worried, pali uko, you know. You hear a certain sound, you're, you're jumping. Is that the Holy Spirit? Release yourself to God. Focus on God. Hallelujah. There is no trial and error method. God is not uh, there to set you up. You come, you pray for the Holy Spirit, and he sends you back empty. That is not our God. If you desire, you come, you will receive. Hallelujah. N number five, throw away all your fears that you might receive something false. If you ask God for the Holy Spirit, he will give you the Holy Spirit. Luke 11, 11 to 13 says, how much more will the Father give good gifts to those, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? When my son asks me for chocolate, I don't go and give him rat poison. I give him chocolate. Now you are here, you've been desiring, you've been hungering to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You, when pastor invites you, come, expect to receive the Holy Spirit. Not something fake. I thought my tongues were fake because I would hear others and they are saying big powerful words and mine sounds like my one-year-old Malachi talking. 
And I wondered, I, when I prayed for my daughter to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit, she asked me, am I not saved like those ones? I said, yes. Then why can't you pray for me also to receive this baptism? I said, God, I'll not hinder your work. If it is your will, let her receive. I prayed with her. She received. I thought to myself, her tongues seem more powerful than mine. But luckily, I had cut off all those fears. I used to fear even praying in my tongues, feeling that mine could have been counterfeit. The tongues God gives you here are for you. As you grow in Christ, as you continue praying, he will expand the language in you. He will not give you something fake. So throw away all those fears that people have told you some tongues are from the devil. Some, if you ask God for his Holy Spirit, he will give you his spirit. The last one, number six, open up your mouth. John 7, 37 to 9 says, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. God did not say let him come and beg. God did not say let him come and cry. If tears come, they've come, but that is not the, the, what you need to do for the Holy Spirit to come. Now how have you ever seen somebody drinking water with their mouth closed? I had to open my mouth. How will you drink the Holy Spirit with your mouth closed? You expect the Holy Spirit to force your mouth open and speak through you? You come in faith. Open up your mouth in faith and say, Father, as they lay hands on you, say, Father, I receive the Holy Spirit. And you start thanking him for the Holy Spirit. And the language he gives you, you will feel a language coming, coming, coming like it wants to come out. Like your lips want to say something that doesn't make sense to you. Say it. Do not close your mouth. Open up your mouth. A story, the last story I'll give you. There's a girl who came and was prayed for and she received baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pop. Very simple. She said, my mom has been waiting. The mom was a, a big elder in church, waiting for baptism of the Holy Spirit for 15 years. And she said, I'm going home. Before I go cook lunch for my husband and kids, I'm going to my mother's house, which is not far from hers, and pray for my mother before I go and, 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 and cook. So she rushed then. The mother came home, my grandbabies, my grandbabies. And she said, Mom, I've not come here for you to play with the children. I've come that you may receive the Holy Spirit. And the mother says, my daughter, <laughs> I have waited 15 years. I have been seeking the Holy Spirit 15 years. The daughter says, Mama, I did not come to seek with you. I came to pray with you that you may receive baptism on the Holy Spirit. And she explained to the mother why she would receive. The mother believed. The daughter lay hands on her. The mother was speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. So it is up to you and me. But there is a qualification. There is a qualification. If you're born again, there is one qualification. You have to desire you have to want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you're sitting there and this has been your desire, you have qualified for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't let anything sit you back. When pastor gives the altar call, run here and receive your portion. Do not hold back. This is for you. Do not feel ashamed. This is for you. This is what God has in store for you. God will never use force. He will only give to those who want to be given, who desire. If God used force, everybody in Kisumu would be born again today and going to heaven. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will urge you and show you this is the way that you should go, but he will never force you. So if that is your desire, that is your hunger, don't miss out on this beautiful experience that God has for us who are called by his name. Don't miss out on the manifestation of power of God in your life. There is power of God waiting to come out of you. Don't miss out on this promise that your father in heaven has given to you. Because of one reason or another. If you're not born again, you're not locked out, come here. Tell them, pray for me to get saved. You will be prayed for, you will get saved. Pap, you will receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. If that is your desire. 
When the pastor makes the altar call, come, confess if you feel there is something in your life that will hinder your faith from receiving this baptism. Confess and say, God, even if it is something you did this morning that is not right in God's eyes, say, God, I'm sorry. I want to live for you. Forgive me. God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is willing to give you the Holy Spirit. God has given the Holy Spirit. Will you not step out even with the little faith, the little faith that you have, step out with that. Come and receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit and your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.